to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. Today in the workshop we're continuing with the Hemingway boring bar kit. Last time we made the cast iron blocks and the clamping bolts. This week we're making the boring bars and the tool bits. Now there are six boring bars, three with a 45 degree angle for the tool and three for thread turning which has a 90 degree angle to the tool. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. I've mounted the boring bar block in the tool post. I'm using the clamping bolts and the washers that I made are inside on top of the clamping bolts and I've tightened them up. So now we're ready to drill a hole through the end here to fit the boring bar. And I'm just checking that the face at the back here is parallel to the axis of the lathe. Now I've just put a piece of steel with a point on the end that's in the center of the chuck. So I can line that up with the line that I've scribed. 11.30 seconds from the front face which is the centre line of the clamping bolts. It's about there. I'll put the centre drill in the chuck. Now change the centre drill for the drill. Okay, I have a six mil drill. Go through with that. Just starting to drill through the steel. Just coming out the back. There we go. So I fitted the quarter inch reamer, slow the speed down, put some oil on the reamer, and feed that through. Gone right through. That fits the block okay. Now then just take the nuts off the end, take the block out, and don't forget the washers still inside. So prise the washers out and place the washers on the next set of clamping bolts and fit them into the holders with the nut and washer on the top. Make sure the two slots are parallel. Fit that in the tool post, ready for the next hole. Check that it's still square. Now drill and ream all the blocks using three different size reamers and then remove the clamps and remove any burrs on the inside of the clamps and reassemble with the nuts and washers. I'm setting the compound slide angle at 45 degrees. I fitted the largest boring bar in its holder and that's at 45 degrees to the chuck. I'm holding a end mill in the chuck. I wouldn't normally hold an end mill in the chuck but I'm only machining a slight amount off the end of the boring bar. I'm just machining a flat so I can get the start on the centre drill. Now I've put a centre drill in the chuck and set it so when I drill the hole for the tool steel it will be a sixteenth in from the end. 
and then I'll face off the end of the bar afterwards. and drill the hole for the tool steel. So to finish this side off, I'll just face it off until the hole just meets the end of the bar. This is the second boring bar. And do exactly the same with all the boring bars. Now to do the tool holder at 90, all I've done is same rod in the block or on the other end of the rod. Set this up to zero so we know it's square to the chuck. So now when I put the drill in the chuck and drill through this end of the bar, it's 90 degrees. I want to put it flat on the end of the bar. That's to help the centre drill start. and drill the three boring bars at 90 degrees on this end. Return the bar to the chuck and now I want to face the end off. I'll leave it at that. Now I can take a bit off this corner just to shape it a bit better taking the sharp edges off I turn it round and do the same on the other end You can see on this one where the tool is at 45 degrees. I've come right up to the hole so that this facing tool, when it's in there, can touch the face at the end of the hole. Finish facing off all the boring bars the same. Okay, I'm going to part this off at three and three quarters. So I'm measuring from the end of the boring bar to the parting off tool, I'll leave a little bit to face off the end square, I'll part that off there. I've parted all my boring bars to length, so I've gone from three double ended ones to six single ended. I've changed my chuck for an ER20 collet holder. I'm just starting to drill the holes that go through the length of the bodies. Goes in the back there, straight through and just comes into the hole. You have to stop before it goes completely through because a ball bearing will go down here and it's a ball bearing that holds the tool in position. I have two drills, both the same diameter. One is an extra long drill that came with the kit. This is an ordinary 1.8 drill. Now with this drill I can do about two turns of the tailstock handle, which is about a millimetre. And then I have to back it out because the swarf starts to build up on the drill. Now I need to change the drill for the longer drill. Mm -hmm. 
You can hear it grumbling when it starts to clog up with swore. Check on the depths. The easiest way I've found of checking the depths is if you put the end of the rod up against the chuck jaws, you can see how deep the drill will be in the hole. I'll pull the drill out a bit more. You can see there, lock it in at that. piece of brass rod down and if you look down the hole you can just see the brass rod coming through now finish drilling all the boring bars in the same way so we now have six boring bars with three different sizes and on this end we have one where the tool is 90 degrees to the bar and one where the tool is 45 degrees to the bar. And the same on every other pair. So the next job is to drill and tap the end of each boring bar with an M5 thread. Drill half inch deep. This is a tapping size 4.2. Fitting my spring loaded guide into tailstock. Tap, 5mm tap. That should go in the end of the guide. Hold it steady. Now I could use the motor on the lathe to turn the parts, but the problem is with the smaller taps, if it sticks, it will break before. I'll get the chance to stop the machine. So I'm just using a spanner to turn the part. And you can feel then when it goes, hits the bottom of the half inch Z pole. Now I've just gone in with the bottoming tap. I'll take that out on the power because it shouldn't stick. I'll just check that the screw goes in deep enough. Yep. So that's the first one done. So that's completed the threads on the six boring bars. And now we're going to make the push rods. First thing I need to do is just take the sharp edge off the corner of the rod. If you take your boring bar, just put the ball down the end. Place the drill through the hole so I can feel when it gets tight. Push the push rod down till it touches the ball. And then mark the end. And I need to cut it off the length quarter of an inch less than the mark, which is there. Just grind off the corner and get the end flat. Push the rod inside. And on the cap heads, need to have a flat bottom. These have got a, a dome on the end. So to get a flat bottom, just put that on the end of a, an Allen key. So it goes from that to that. And we can put the Cap head in the end. 
and you can see the the driller move in and out and as soon as I lock the cap head up it locks the drill so now I can make the tool bits to go in this I'll place some of the tool steel in the cutter grinder and I'll grind one of the boring bar tools I'm cutting a 45 and a half degree angle on each side then I'll do the top and then I'll put the flat on the side of the tool turn it round the other way and set it to 45 and a half degrees I'm just using the side of the wheel to grind a flat so the ball bearing can locate to lock the tool in position. I've ground the point, now I just need to cut the steel off the bar. Let's finish the boring bar kit. We have three boring bars fitted in the blocks and three thread cutting bars. But I haven't finished the tooling for those. I'll grind those when I know what type of thread I'm going to cut next. I've just fitted the new boring bar into the tool post and just did the tool to centre height. So I've put the dial indicator on the end. I just want to see how much flex is in this bar as you can see there that's a thou between zero and 90 is a thou but that's without the torsion on so if I tighten the torsion up by turning the cap it on the end that pushes the bar through the middle and tightens the tool up as well you can see the indicator moving now when I move it to get a thou you have to really push hard on that bar it's stiffened up the bar, so tighten it a bit more yeah it's stiffened up that bar to stop it moving so let's see how it cuts so if I just bring it into the face first Doesn't look too bad. Let's try on the ball. That cuts quite nicely. The travel on. Have a look at that. I think these would be very useful in the workshop. That's the smallest diameter boring bar. Now the other thing that's good about this tool is because you're clamping through a bolt that has a hole in it, you're not actually putting marks on the shaft. So if you need to adjust the tool depth, slacken the nuts off. then you can move it in easy to adjust the depth. Well, that's it for today. Hope that was useful. Hope it's interesting. And we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.